When one thinks of naval powers in the Second World War, the Italian Navy is hardly ever mentioned. However, what many people don't realize is that Italy had the fourth largest navy in the world by the time it joined the war in 1940. It's true that many of its vessels were outdated and crews not that well trained. The Italian Navy was no match for the naval prowess of Germany, Britain, and the United States. Nevertheless, the Italian Royal Navy, or Marina Reale, was still large and a force to contend with. That included its submarine division. Most notable was the Italian submarine base that was set up in the German-occupied French city of Bordeaux, known as Beta Somme. In this video, we'll take a close look at this Italian base and how it contributed to the Axis naval effort in the Atlantic Ocean and further afield. The seed for what would become Beta Somme was the signing of the Pact of Steel between Italy and Germany on June 20th, 1939, in the German town of Friedrichshafen signed between the commander of Gemini's Kriegsmarine, Admiral Eric Rader, and Italy's chief of staff of the Marina Reale, Admiral Domenico Cavagnari, the agreement was an Axis naval pact between the two countries in the event of war. An important part of the agreement was that Germany would help Italy set up a submarine base in a German-occupied country when war broke out. By June 1939, war was almost inevitable and the Germans wanted Italy's subs to help out, even if they were inferior in number and technology compared to Germany's famous U-boats. For the Italians, it was a way to ensure access to German technical know-how about submarines, which at that time was the most advanced and feared in the world. Italy joined the war on Germany's side in June 1940, some nine months after Germany invaded Poland. Soon thereafter, it was decided that the Italian submarine base should be headquartered in the Riverport city of Bordeaux in the southwestern French region of Aquitaine. By then, France was occupied by Germany. The code name for the base would be Beta Somme. Often referred to as an acronym, the name Beta Somme is actually a portmanteau or combination of two words. Beta refers to the Greek letter B, which is the first letter of Bordeaux, while Somme represents the first three letters for the Italian word for submarine. Admiral Angelo Perona was chosen to be the Italian commander at Beta Somme. Perona and the entire base would be under the direct operational control of the legendary German Rear Admiral, or Counter Admiral Karl Donitz. At that time, Donitz was Germany's commander of the submarines, or Befehlshaber der u boote and already one of Adolf Hitler's favorites. Beta Somme was officially launched on August 30, 1940. The base had dry docks and two basins connected by locks, which could accommodate up to 30 submarines. Barracks on the shore provided housing for the base's security guard, comprised of 250 men of the San Marco Regiment. In total, as many as 1,600 men were based at Beta Somme. The Germans installed six anti-aircraft batteries, as well as anti-aircraft and naval supplies along the Gironde River and into the Bay of Biscay. Initially, there were 27 Italian submarines assigned to Beta Somme, of which 10 were of the Marcello class, 6 of the Marconi class, 3 each of the Calvi and Liuzzi classes, 2 each of the Otaria and Argo classes, and 1 belonging to the Brin class of subs. The base itself was large and quite impressive. Beta Somme even had its own postage stamps, which were overprinted Italian stamps, and which are today extremely rare and all too often counterfeited. A second base was later established at La Palice in the port city of La Rochelle, also in Aquitaine and approximately 200 kilometers or 125 miles north of Bordeaux. The base at La Palice allowed for submerged training which was not possible in the shallow waters of Bordeaux. The first directive for the Italian submarines was that they patrol the waters of the Atlantic Ocean south of Lisbon, Portugal. These operations would include three Italian subs patrolling off Spain's Canary Islands and Portugal's island of Madeira, while another three subs would patrol off the Portuguese islands of the Azores further to the west. It's worth noting that, although both Spain and Portugal were technically neutral during World War II, both were headed by fascist dictators who were only too happy to assist fascist Germany and Italy where possible. Initially, the Italian submarines had proven mostly unsuccessful in their operations. Several issues relating to the Italian submarines became apparent within months of their operation in the Atlantic. These shortcomings included the following. The Italian submarines took too long to submerge. They were often too slow. Their huge conning towers were all too easy for enemy vessels to spot. Italian commanders and crews were not trained for tracking convoys. 
and their submarines were not made for the rough, often treacherous conditions of the North Atlantic Ocean. Italian submarines often sighted Allied convoys but all too quickly lost contact and seldom provided meaningful intel for the Germans back at base. The Italian subs were simply nowhere as fast or technologically advanced as Germany's U-boats, and the Italian crews were woefully undertrained for the often volatile conditions of the Atlantic Ocean. They were used to the calmer waters of the Mediterranean Sea. Italian crews were also considered to be ill-disciplined, a view held by no less than Carl Dunitz, whose opinions of the Italian base at Betasom we will now briefly explore. Initially, Dunitz knew the limitations of Italy's submarine forces, but he was pragmatic about that. Although the Italians were inexperienced in Atlantic warfare, he still thought their submarines could be useful for the purposes of intel gathering and reconnaissance. That's why Dunitz ordered that the Italian submarines patrol the waters to the south of the far more heavy action occurring in the North Atlantic. Dunitz was known to consider the Italians as possessing what he called great dash and daring in battle, even surpassing that of his own German submariners. But he also believed the Italians to be less physically tough and mentally tenacious when compared to German crews. He was also very dubious of just how much the Italians could help the U-boats. For example, he believed their submarines to be unsuited for the wolf pack tactics that he strongly favored for his U-boats. What Dunitz thought of the Italians was very important, given that he was so highly regarded by Hitler and that Betasom was under his direct command. Unsurprisingly, his views and hands-on control of Betasom was resented by many in Italy's admiralty back in Rome. Dunitz did think highly of the base's Italian commander, Angelo Perona, considering him to be an intelligent and brave leader. However, this admiration of Perona was not shared by key admirals in Italy's naval command, or Supermarina, who did not like how harsh Perona was with his submarine commanders. Nor did they appreciate how much Perona admired the Germans. By the end of November 1940, it was clear that Italian submarines in the Atlantic were way behind what the U-boats were achieving. For example, Italian submarines were averaging a rate of 200 gross tons of sunken vessels per day, compared to the 1,115 gross tons per day being achieved by German U-boats. Angelo Perona, feeling the lack of respect from the Germans, knew the Italian submarines were underperforming, and so he decided action had to be taken. Measures he took included getting rid of many of the older submarine commanders, many of whom were over 40, and replacing them with much younger and more aggressive commanders. He also set up a submarine school at Gotenhafen in Germany, in what was then German-occupied Poland and today is the city of Gdynia. At the school, the Betasom crews undertook rigorous training in accordance with the German model. He even got the Italian subs to be redesigned, including a reshaping of their conning towers, which were far too large. Perona's measures paid off with significant improvements by the Betasom submarines. The first real success was an operation by seven Italian submarines off Gibraltar, in which six Allied ships were sunk. Stats shot up. An average tonnage sinking rate by Betasom submarines of just 3,844 gross tons in 1940 rose nearly ninefold to 27,335 gross tons in 1942. In fact, by 1942 and 1943, the number of gross tons for every Italian submarine that was sunk was greater than that achieved by every German U-boat sunk, particularly in 1942. Perona, even with his successful improvements, was replaced by Romoloi Polacchini in April 1941 as head of Betasom. Perona had proven too unpopular with most of his submarine commanders, not to mention many of the admirals in Rome. Polacchini proved a more popular commander of the base, and certainly oversaw the most successful period of the Beta Somme submarines. Peak Italian success occurred with Operation Newland, which was a highly successful submarine operation for the Axis powers that took place in the Caribbean Sea in early 1942. Initially, five Italian submarines, namely the Enrico Tazzoli, the Giuseppe Finzi, the Leonardo da Vinci, Luigi Torelli, and the Morosini, were sent out in January 1942 by Beta Somme Command. Their mission was to hunt down Allied traffic in the region of the Caribbean between Florida and the Bahamas. This was a backup to the larger-scale U-boat operation in the region. The Italian mission lasted until April 1942, with the five Italian submarines sinking 16 Allied merchant ships. 
The Enrico Tazzoli was the most successful with its sinking of six vessels alone. After that, the submarine Calvi went on a 52-day patrol of the waters off Brazil, in which it sank five Allied ships. Italian submarines had come a long way in the Battle of the Atlantic. Of all the Italian commanders based at Beta Somme, Carlo Fecha di Cosato and Gianfranco Gazzana Priaroja were the most successful sinking 96,553 and 90,601 gross tons of shipping, respectively. The two men were also among the few Italian recipients of Germany's prestigious Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. The Leonardo da Vinci, which was helmed by Gazzana Priaroja, was the top-scoring non-German submarine of World War II. It sank 17 ships with a total of 120,243 gross tons. Notable, too, was another commander, Salvatore Todaro, who was also based out of Beta Somme. He was renowned for his habit of towing lifeboats containing survivors of ships he had sunk back to safety. Unsurprisingly, the Beta Somme base was repeatedly bombed by British aircraft during 1940 and 1941. This resulted in little damage to the facility, apart from the sinking of the barracks ship, the Usaramo. The beginning of the end of Beta Somme came more as a result of German pressure to use the base for its own U-boats. It was decided that the remaining Beta Somme submarines would be better deployed, carrying supplies to and from the Far East. Italian submarines were larger than U-boats, and therefore far better equipped to serve as cargo vessels. Seven Italian subs were retrofitted for this purpose in the Far East, namely the Alpino Bagnolini, the Barbarigo, the Comandante Capolini, the Giuseppe Finzi, the Reginaldo Giuliani, the Enrico Tazzoli, and the Luigi Torelli. In an interesting bit of negotiation between the two countries, Italy agreed to let the Germans use their seven submarines in the Far East in exchange for an equal number of Type 7 C U-boats, these U-boats would be manned by Italian crews to continue Italian participation in offensive operations in the Atlantic. The surrender of Italy to the Allied forces on September 8, 1943, known as the Armistice of Cassiboli, would be the end not only of Beta Somme, but all Italian submarine operations. Immediately, the Germans retook possession of the seven U-boats they had loaned to the Italians, all of which were in training in the then-German port of Danzig. The Germans also took full control of what was the Beta Somme base. Of the seven Italian transport submarines, the Japanese captured three of those subs. The Germans seized two of them docked at what had been the Beta Somme base in Bordeaux, and the remaining two had been sunk by the Allies. The last remaining Italian submarine still on patrol at the time of Italy's surrender was the Amiralio Cagni, which also happened to be the newest Beta Somme submarine. Rather than being seized by the Germans, its commander decided to break from its patrol and set course for the port city of Durban in South Africa. Once it reached Durban, it immediately surrendered to South African forces. It's worth noting that the Italian sailors still at the Beta Somme base, when Italy surrendered, faced a grim choice. Either join the German U-boat division, or prepare to go to a German labor camp, or even face execution. It makes sense that Italian submarines were most effective against merchant ships. Italian torpedoes were smaller in diameter than those used by U-boats. These torpedoes were not effective against large warships, but more than adequate for sinking merchant vessels. So how did Italy's total of 172 submarines fare during the Second World War? Their stats, although nowhere near as impressive as those of U-boats, are still worthy and include 1,750 missions undertaken, covering a collective total of 2,500,000 miles and 24,000 days at sea. Italy's submarines engaged in 173 active attacks, in which 132 merchant vessels were sunk, totaling 650,000 gross tons, while a further 18 warships were sunk with a total of 29,000 gross tons. Today, the site of the Beta Somme base is open to tourists in the city of Bordeaux. Unlike many other wartime sites, the Beta Somme site has been left almost unchanged, making it a fascinating place to visit for those interested in World War II. Many of those who visit are probably unfamiliar with the role that Italy played in the submarine warfare of the Atlantic. 16, or exactly half, of the total of 32 Italian submarines that were based at Beta Somme sank in the Atlantic Ocean. It was a heavy toll, paid by a country whose submarines and crews were ill-equipped for operations in the Atlantic. 
In the end, the valor and commitment of those Italian crewmen, like so many other submariners, deserves respect. 